Hey guys, welcome back to Start Manga, where I teach you everything you need to know about how to draw like a manga artist. I'm your host Spencer, and today we're going to be learning how to draw torsos. Torsos are the upper half of the body. They're hard to understand since they're made up of so many parts. Given this complexity, I won't be going into extreme detail on the muscles and bones in this video. I will cover names, what they look like, and where they go on the body. In later videos, I will demonstrate how to draw each major muscle group in detail, as they require a lot of focus given how different they look at various angles and positions. Instead, I'll show you how to draw a very basic torso from scratch, and how to draw it at different angles. I'll also teach you the differences between male and female torsos, and I'll show you how to draw some very simple muscles to make your torsos look all fancy. By the end of this video, you'll be able to draw torsos you'd be proud to have in your artwork. And with all that out of the way, let's get started. Often, when you're learning to draw torsos, tutorials will teach you to draw something like this. If you've seen this shape, I'm sure it's been a great help in learning to draw the body. However, spherical shapes like this rib cage area are hard to draw in perspective, so I'm going to show you a boxier approach. This torso is much easier to draw at different angles. It's also very forgiving when it comes to drawing characters, as you can see where you're going to put the weight on the body. This torso is divided into perfect thirds from top to bottom. Keep this in mind as it will be very useful when we dissect the torso proportions later on. If you shift the weight into the bottom, you get a wider pelvis, forming a more female presenting figure. More weight into the top and you get a male presenting torso. As you can see, this shape is great for a lot of different character silhouettes. It's also close enough to real anatomy for quick, accurate sketches. Note that the pelvis is a part of both the legs and the torso. It is a connecting point for a lot of important muscles in drawing, so I like to draw it whenever I draw torsos. For the body, it's best to proportion sections based on a common feature. Most artists use the head, and so we will too. The body is often drawn eight heads tall. The torso, from the top of the neck to the bottom of the pelvis, is about three head lengths tall and about three head widths wide. Though a more muscular or heavier person may be wider and deeper in their measurements, and a thinner person may be less wide in comparison. This width doesn't include the shoulders, as although I'm drawing them in, they are usually associated more with the arms than the torso. The bottom of the first head marks the nipple line, the bottom of the second head marks the belly button, and the bottom of the third head is the bottom of the pelvis. This helps us draw in our muscles. The first section of the torso is about one-third traps and two-third chests and shoulders. The chest drops a little bit into the second section, usually any part below the nipple. In the back of the torso, we mostly see the traps and shoulder area drawn here. The second section is anything between the nipple and the belly button. This includes the upper abdominals and the section of visible rib cage. The lats are also in this area if they are visible. In the back, the lats fill this area, along with the bottom of the traps and the top of the TLF. If you don't know the names of these muscles yet, don't worry. I'll talk about them more in the anatomy section. The third section goes from the belly button to the bottom of the pelvis and doesn't have much in it. The lower abs and the V taper surrounding them are here, and the top of the legs are also here. From the back, we mostly see the Christmas tree, that TLF, the tops of the glutes, and the core muscles to the sides. The key difference between a male torso and a female torso is the shoulder to hip ratio. When we draw male characters, the shoulders tend to be about 1.5 times wider than the hips, with the waist being very blocky before gradually increasing in size at the lats. That 1.5 times measurement is just how I like to draw them, but the ratio changes from character to character. What gives characters that V-shape is their lats. These back muscles form the triangle torso silhouette shape and are helped by a pair of broad shoulders at the top. Women generally have wider hips than men due to a wider pelvis shape. In drawings, the hips will be as wide or wider than the shoulders, though the difference should not be anything too drastic. The waist is usually smaller than both the shoulders and hips, though this isn't a requirement, as most women do not see as drastic of a ratio as is portrayed in most manga. These areas are great for character design changes as they directly affect the all-too-important character silhouette. Remember that these are only guidelines for the most basic scenario. If your character is neither male nor female, you may want to mix and match these characteristics. If your character is shorter or taller, again, these features may change. It's all based on your practice and your style, so go nuts! Here are a few lineups from the front and back of the torso. First, note that the nipples and the top of the lats are in line, as well as where the trap muscle's outer side changes direction towards the spine. Second, the belly button aligns with the bottom point of the lats, where they insert lowest on the spine. This helps tremendously with keeping your character consistent when they show some skin. Make sure to keep in mind that these proportions are not set in stone. You can change them as much as you want, so long as they still look to some degree human. There are two sides to the torso, front and back. Note that we won't be covering the arm muscles, and we won't be covering bones outside of the ribcage, spine, scapulae, pelvis, and clavicles. I'm going to be focusing on the male torso in this section, as the muscles tend to be more prominent on these characters. I will be making a video dedicated to female torsos in the future, so subscribe if you'd like to see that. Let's start with the front. The main bones in the torso, as mentioned before, are the ribs, spine, clavicles, pelvis, and scapulae. 
From the front, the only ones that can be seen are the ribcage, pelvis, and clavicles. Once we layer on the muscles, the bones are less ob obvious. The clavicle is noticeable on the characters with little body fat. The ribs tend to be visible on very skinny characters. The bottom of the front ribs can be seen when characters arch their backs or when they take a deep breath, as shown here. The pelvis can be seen near the hips and is only visible on very thin characters in most cases. We're not going to cover the bones in too much detail here other than that, as I want to focus on the shape of the torso and drawing it on characters. The skeleton is important to mastering the body, but it's less important for our purposes. There are six important muscle groups visible from the front. The chest, front deltoid, abs, obliques, traps, and when the character raises their arms, we can also see the lats. The chest is a large muscle, which can be simplified into a boxy shape. This shape protrudes from the body. It inserts into the humerus, aka the upper arm bone, and the sternum in the middle of the chest. This is where the muscle gets tightest, so we see striations originate from these points. The abdominals are a set of muscles used in stability, often flexed when a character is moving dynamically or stabilizing hard. They can be simplified into six boxes or to one box that lays in the middle of the belly. From the side, the abdominals form bulging shapes on the belly. The deltoids, or the shoulder muscles, exist as three distinct heads. From the front, only the front and middle heads are visible. When sketching the torso, this shape can just be implied. When detailing the torso, this shape can be made into a sphere that inserts at the top corner edge of the main prism. The trap muscles are only visible above the shoulders, but define a character's transition from neck to body. When sketching, you can mostly ignore them unless you're also drawing the head. If you do include them, draw in two triangles like this, make sure they insert around where the shoulder muscle begins on top of the torso. When a character's arms are raised, their oblique muscles become more visible. These small muscles are a transition from the abs to the back and are core stability muscles. They activate with the abdominals and form these striating lines, as seen here. When sketching, you can ignore these. When detailing, make sure to include them if you want your character to really appear lean and very low body fat. The lats form another set of triangles, like the trap muscles. These may be hidden by the arms at some angles, but can still be seen on characters with a prominent set. They also may not be shown if a person does not have low insertions, as higher insertions of a muscle, aka where they attach to the bone, means the lats will look much smaller from the front. For references on all of these muscles, check out some bodybuilding videos. They tend to show many different sizes of people at different angles working these muscles, so you can see every possible position and memorize the names of the muscles more easily. Let's now go to the back of the torso. The visible bones from the back are the spine, ribcage, pelvis, and scapulae. The spine is the most visible around the neck area, as this area has the least muscle and body fat to cover the bone. The scapulae are these wing-like bones, which move with the arms. They tend to be invisible in muscular or high body fat individuals, but can be seen if a character is very lean, especially if they slouch. The scapula is normally shown like this in a drawing, and it's an easy way to get it back to look more real to the viewer. The ribcage tends to have a minimal effect on the view of the back other than underlying structure, and the spine only shows near the neck in most cases. Unless you're drawing characters in detail or as very thin, then these bones aren't important to you other than structurally. From the back, there are four key muscle groups visible. The traps, rear and mid deltoids, lats, and uh, this, is, this is a big name, thoracolumbar fascia. The thoracolumbar fascia, or TLF, isn't exactly a muscle, but it's a very visible structure on the low back, so I'm going to include it. The traps are much larger than they appear from the front. They form this diamond-like shape on the back, which starts in the neck, then goes to the top of the shoulders, and then ends about halfway down the torso. The front delt is no longer visible here, but the rear and side make up for that, forming some sort of spherical shape as before. The lats are also much larger back here. People often refer to them as wings on muscular individuals. These insert along the spine from around the middle to the tailbone, and on the back of the humerus at the top. The TLF is referred to as a Christmas tree, as I've said before, as you can see by the shape it makes when the back muscles flex. This low back structure appears tight when a person arches their back inwards, or when the back muscles are flexing hard, as said before. Even without flexing, it is still very visible on lean people and should at least be implied when drawing figures. This area under the rear deltoid has a few visible muscles in it, but they are a little too small to cover in this kind of tutorial. I will make a video in the future covering the specific muscles of the torso in extreme detail, so look forward to that if you're interested. For now though, these muscles can be shown as a simple set of lines like this. For any other visible muscles, they can mostly be ignored unless you're trying to achieve realism in your drawings. The major ones cover most surface area on the torso, so they should be your focus. Let's look at some key angles. Lucky for us, the simplest form of the torso is just a box. We can orient that box in many different angles, which helps with complex poses. You can see here that I'm drawing torsos into a few of those box shapes. 
However, unlike regular boxes, the torso is not stiff. To adjust for this, we make the middle of our box around the belly button, and we can twist the box around that point or bend it in many different directions. This is more accurate to a real torso and lets us more seamlessly transition to our complex shape. Here I have a few finished examples, and as you can see, it's not too hard for me to draw in a few torsos with these bending boxes as guidelines. Let's go through an example so you can see the process of drawing one of these torsos in detail. Before we start, keep in mind that we haven't covered all the muscle tendon insertions in this video. If you want to draw accurate to life torsos, it would be beneficial to look at anatomically correct torsos and understand where the muscles start and end. As I said before, I will be making a video in the future covering all of these in detail, though I did give a few in this video. Let's start by drawing in a box. I'll keep it simple for this example and use a very stiff box shape. If you want to see more dynamic examples, check out the time lapse near the end of the video. Start by drawing in a base for the torso. This is the same base that I showed before and it really helps us proportion the torso between the pelvis and the ribcage. Now moving on to the muscles, I like to start boxy before I get detailed. I draw a boxy chest like this, then some lines to imply abs, I then add a V-line for the shredded abs look, and some oblique muscles for the same reason. For my shoulders, they're just boxy spheres, and the traps are just the same triangles as before. Finally, the lats would go to the upper arm, but since I have no arms here, I'll just show where they would go without them. For the back, I start with the traps, since they cover such a large area. Again, keep your muscles simple and boxy in this stage. I then apply shoulders the same way as before, however I also include those smaller muscles we ignored before as part of this process, drawing them in with a few quick lines. The lats are as simple as a few quick lines as well, mainly on their bottoms where we see the most shadow. The low back is basically done by this point, but we can add a few lines to define it better and make the drawing seamless. And with that, we have a full torso drawing process on both sides. A quick note here, muscles will shorten as they flex and lengthen as they relax. For example, seen here, your bicep will ball up when you flex your elbow hard. When you relax that elbow, the bicep will lengthen into this shape. The insertion points get closer together, leading to flexion. When you see two insertion points are close together in space, make sure that muscle is flexed. Try looking in the mirror and seeing what your muscles look like in these different positions. You can also, again, look at bodybuilding videos, as it gives a lot of insight into how the muscles look at many different angles. When it comes to the torso, and anatomy in general for that matter, manga can look very different from comics, specifically Marvel and DC comics. The main change I see is that the characters don't tend to be larger than life in manga like they are in comics. And what I mean by that is in superhero comics, for example, being the most popular format, there are extremely muscular, toned, and attractive men and women with no body fat and very little variation in stature. In manga, characters tend to be scrawnier and less boxy in shape, so when a character is shirtless, they look fit but not buff. Most male characters are very lean and muscular, but not huge like Batman. This is a generalization, however, so there is no shortage of buff and brooding characters in manga and anime. Female characters in manga are very smooth and have little muscle, although they tend to appear proportionally attractive in most cases without that. There's nothing wrong with any body type, so if you'd like to draw characters with longer features, less muscle, higher body fat, lots of body hair, etc., feel free to experiment with these and add to your repertoire. There's nothing wrong with any of them. Well, we've gone through just about everything related to drawing torsos from scratch. Let's go through a few more detailed examples in a time lapse with different poses and angles so you can really see how the torso changes in a few key positions. For practice, using the process I showed you previously, try to draw these torsos in your sketchbook. All right, let's get to it.
There you have it. That's just about everything you need to know about how to draw torsos like a manga artist. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe, and if there's anything you think I missed, or if there are more tutorials you want to see in the future, please leave a comment down below. This has been Spencer from Start Manga, and I'll see you later.